Hey everyone, John here. Welcome back to another tutorial. Sapphire 2025 includes some really stylish and useful Sapphire effect presets. And what I'd like to do in this shorter tutorial is just walk you through a few of them that specifically use masks. And I'm going to show you how to set that up in After Effects and in DaVinci Resolve. Let's take a look. Okay, so starting here in After Effects, I'm going to set this up from scratch by creating a new solid. I'll name this S effect. And just do a quick search in the effect and presets panel and apply that. And I'm going to click load preset to open up the preset browser. The quickest way to find new presets is just to have new selected and you can see them all down here. Another way would be specifically to find builder effects is to click on builder effects and just type in 2025. And there we can see all of the new Sapphire effect effects inside of the preset browser. And the one I want is textured plastic here. I'm going to click load. And this doesn't look exactly like how I designed this. And that's because it actually uses a mask. You could use it like this. It's kind of this uh, sort of squishy, soft plastic look. But what I want to do, I've already got my mask layer in here. I've got this composition mask. If I just double click it. You can see I've got the sapphire text there. So with S effects selected, for mask from layer, I'm going to choose mask. Ah, so that's how it's supposed to look. So let's go and explore this effect by clicking on Edit Effect. All right, it's going to give myself a bit of room here. And let's take a look at this. Just do a quick breakdown. So I've got preview selected node selected. So I'm going to click on Mask. So there's my mask. Now I've just recorded this short addendum because when I recorded this tutorial a few days ago, I realized I didn't explain this note in enough detail. And it could cause you some problems if you don't understand why the mask layer size has to match. So this all looks fine, okay? And notice down here with things like distort, we have wrap X and wrap Y set to reflect. Same with emboss distort and same with the second emboss distort. And it looks fine here. So I'm going to click OK. And this was set up using this comp which has the text inside a pre-comp, which is the same size as the solid to which Sapphire effect is applied to. So 1920 by 1080 in this, um, in this example. And like I said, everything looks fine. But watch what happens if I use this text. So this is unprecomposed text, and you can see the bounding box is the size of the text. So I'm going to choose that instead. And that's what happens. Because it's set to reflect inside the builder, we're getting the reflection, even though we don't see that inside the builder. So that's why you have to set up your text inside a comp that's the same size as the layer to which you've applied S effect. Okay, so if I do that, everything looks as expected. So I just wanted to record that and just make sure that that was clear. And the mask is piped down into set alpha. And the reason I've done that is because I want to be able to colorize that. So at the moment, you can see it's pink. And then by choosing set alpha, I get pink text. All right, so that's piped into the foreground port of Sapphire layer. And in the background, we have a background color and a dot color. And I'm using the wipe dots transition. Check that out. If I increase the dot size, this is basically the completion of the transition. And it's just a way of increasing the size to change the look. I'm going to leave it as it was and click on that. So now we have this look. So we have the text in the, uh, in the foreground and this wipe dots background in the background. Beneath that, we have Sapphire Distort. And Sapphire Distort is being warped using the caustics effect. So there's caustics there. It's always a really useful effect or a generator effect for these kind of distortions. So you can see caustics is being piped into the lens port of distort and emboss distort. Let's click on the first emboss distort. So that gives us this look, gives us the overall distortion. But see, we're not using caustics to, uh, as the bump for emboss distort. That's just giving the initial distortion. It's kind of like a bump map. 
And then we have the second emboss distort, and that's what's giving us that look. And that's using caustics. So the distortion is using caustics, and emboss distort is using caustics. So it's actually a fairly simple setup. Of course, if we come back into our host, there's the look, and it's nice and fast. I can go back into my mask, and you know I can you know maybe want to add the 2025 text in there, and there we go. It updates automatically. So that's how you set it up in After Effects. Let's take a look at a different example. Load preset. Another one is this one. It's based on this particular look. It's called Trash or Trash Bag. So we load that one up. And you can see I've already got my mask set up there. So it's already added that into it. Let's just quickly look at the effect. So this is using the same kind of basic setup with caustics and emboss distort and distort. There's a slight difference. So we've got our mask, we've got our, our color, our set alpha. Here I'm using a bit of wipe cloud to make the text a little dirty. So I've just uh, changed the wipe percentage. So if I want less clouds or more clouds. And transitions in S effect are really useful in this particular way. So I'm not using it as a transition, I'm using it as an effect. And beneath that we have distort. And you can see that distortion is using Sapphire Grunge. It's a little difficult to see what's going on with the grunge there, but when we pipe it into the lens port of distort, we get this view these beautiful scratches on here. Okay. So then we're using Sapphire Composite. That's going into the front and our background color and some more grunge. So a little bit of dirt there is going into the background. So together we have that look. And then we have a little bit of ultra grain, or actually this time sapphire grain. I use sapphire grain for that. And some more scratches, some sapphire distort to give it that distortion with caustics, and some embossed distort. And we have this kind of trash bag look, garbage bag look. Once again, using the mask. All right, let's take a look at one more example here in After Effects. And I want to select this footage here, just some sort of snowy footage. I wanted rain, this kind of, this, this is snow, but uh, it was the kind of shot that uh, I had, it was a shot that I had on my drive. And it kind of looks like, you know, inclement weather. It could be rain. Once it's blurred, you can't really tell. So the idea is that it's probably supposed to be rain. So let's apply S effect to that. And once again, load preset. This time I'm looking for condensation. This one just here. So once again, this is using a mask. I'm gonna click load. Now we get this by default, it looks a bit weird. So I have to choose my mask. So I'm gonna choose mask again. Aha, that's exactly how it's supposed to look. Let's go in and take a look. Let's do a quick breakdown. Once again, there's our mask. And I've got a little note there, ensure the mask layer size matches. If it doesn't, you might get a little bit of weirdness. So text color, set alpha. There's our source. That's that footage. But like I said, with Rack Defocus, it's hard to tell whether it's snowy or rainy or you know, just a sort of rainy gray day. A little bit of gamma to brighten that up. That goes into the background. The other one goes into the foreground. So it sits over the top. And then we do all of our work for the condensation. So little bit of grunge. So this is giving us that sort of dried drip look. And when you look at a dirty window that's it had a lot of rain, you see these kind of, you know, dried uh, drips or rain dots. And that's going into emboss distort. And we're also using sapphire dust. So a stationary dust there. So there's no animation, no drift. And we have a slow drops dust. So here we have just some dust just moving on the y-axis, moving down. We have a few faster drops. Because when water's con condensed onto a window, you know, you see some moving slowly and some moving faster. So I wanted to kind of emulate that. So a little bit of blur on that. And Sapphire Hotspot just to really crush the blacks. And 
Sapphire Warp drops. So let me just disable that. So we had that. But then with Warp drops enabled, it just changes the shape of them a little bit, makes them a little bit more irregular. And then pipe that into the bumps for embossed distort. And what I like about this setup is as the drops hit one another with the embossed distort, they look like they're droplets of water that are joining together to make a larger drop. So, I mean, it's not 100% convincing, but it's not bad. You can see, I mean, just focus on this little drop here. See this one as it comes down, it j joins that other drop, it hits the other drop, and then it kind of becomes one, which is really nice. Like that. See how it stretches out like that? So I think it's reasonably convincing, you know, for a quick shot. That's also using the mask. So I think with those three examples, it's pretty clear that it's very easy to set up in After Effects. Let's go across to DaVinci Resolve now and take a look at how to set it up there. And here in DaVinci Resolve, we can also use Sapphire and S Effect presets. It's a little more difficult to set up, but still possible. So let's take a look at that. First thing I'm going to do is create a generator, and I'm going to choose Solid Color. Just drop, drop that onto Video 1. Now I need to right click on that and choose New Compound Clip to give it some time code. I'll call that background. This is the one we're going to apply Sapphire Effect to. I'm going to come over to my titles and just grab a basic title, put that on two, and need to just make sure I can see that. Type in Sapphire. And I'm going to choose my favorite font, which is Proxima Nova Semi Bold. Just going to make that a little bigger like that. Okay. So what I have to do also do is make that a compound clip. I'll call that mask. And one other thing I have to do to that is right click and choose render in place. Okay, so I'm going to leave those settings as they are. Render that very quickly. Just put that on my desktop. And done. Okay, so that's ready to go. So I'll come over to the color workspace. And for this, I want to view V1. So there we go. So this is the one I'm going to apply S effect to. But first of all, I want to put in my rendered movie. So I'll just drop that in. That's going to be my mask. And I've already done a search for S effect over here in the library. So I'll just grab that and drop it in place. And here I have to connect green to green and the mat to the mat port like that. So they cross over each other. So that's the setup. So now that I've got that done, I can click on load preset. I'll just do a quick search here for plastic. And there's my textured plastic. Double click. It's all working as expected. So I'll click on Edit Textured Plastic. We'll just do, we've already had a look at the effect in After Effects. So all I'll do here is I'll just change the color. So I'll just make that a blue. And click OK. And there we go. So a couple more steps to set it up in DaVinci Resolve, but the results look fantastic. All right, so hopefully that's made it a little clearer about how to use masks in S Effect in Sapphire, in After Effects and DaVinci Resolve. To learn more about Sapphire and Sapphire 2025, visit borisfx.com, where you can also download a free trial. For now, this is John. I'll see you in the next tutorial.